testing those audio levels so that they come through crystal clear for all of you that love to watch my YouTube videos. ETF investing for beginners. Do you like making money? No? No. Well, dang. You're on the wrong channel, buddy. Maybe you should head on over and watch some crazy cat videos or maybe watch some teens lip sync to famous songs over on TikTok. But if you do like making money, how hard do you want to work? More than likely, like most people, you want to work as little as possible and make as much as possible. While doing that, figure yourself up to really focus on your passions. You know, like lip syncing to videos on TikTok. But if you're like me, that passion is also about making more money. Well, did you know that there are passive investments like mutual funds, index funds, REITs, and ETFs? In this video, I'm going to talk about ETFs, what they are, how you can use them to grow your wealth passively or even actively, if you like. Different ETF strategies and so much more. So gently, lovingly, tenderly, click that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get the party started. What's up, you guys? You're watching Finance Squared. I'm your host, Derek West. On this channel, we love to talk about personal finance and all the tools and techniques that one can use to get to the next level if they take action. And among those tools, we have exchange traded funds, more commonly known as ETFs. These type of investment instruments are great tools for beginning investors to get their feet wet with how investing in markets works because they offer all of the tools that one can use to cover all the topics of investing, while at the same time being highly diversified and easy to trade. So what are ETFs anyway? An ETF is a type of index fund that holds multiple underlying assets, which could include stocks, bonds, or even exotic instruments like options. They're popular because they hold multiple assets and offer instant investment diversification. Now, all stock investment baskets are, in a way, children of mutual funds. Mutual funds were created to help investors pool their money together and get diversified investments that attempt to beat various indices and their returns. Essentially, when the market is going south, try not to lose as much as the indexes do on their way down. That led to a lot of folks thinking to themselves, what if we just had a fund that simply followed the index and did what it did regardless of whether it's up or whether it's down? Which is actually an awesome idea. If you follow some popular indices, for example the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you tend to note that they rise and rise with the occasional down day, week, month, quarter, or year. The only known time in the history of the stock market where the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down for more than a decade was the Great Depression. And since then, it has managed to keep going up and up and up. So you see, it makes sense if you want to passively invest that you just put your money into a fund that holds all the underlying assets of the index and invest consistently. And eventually, you will grow your nest egg into a substantial amount of money. But like anything else, index funds have their pluses and they have their minuses. One minus that a lot of folks have noticed is that they can only be traded one at a time at the end of the day making it hard to make fast decisions to buy or sell when it makes the most sense for you. Like a lot of things, this can be good and this can be bad. Bad in the sense that you can't trade when you want to, but good in the sense that it keeps you from making rash decisions just because the market is down one day or the market is really up another day, essentially not allowing you to fall into the bad investment habits of buying high and selling low. But that stated, exchange traded funds are different than both mutual funds and index funds. ETFs are different index funds in a couple of key ways, one of which is that they can be bought or sold at any time. Also, ETFs can be purchased at smaller sizes, with not as many hurdles and barriers to entries as index funds, some of which can have steep minimum investments. ETFs are merely baskets of stocks that can be bought and sold on an open exchange. Because of this, the fees associated to ETFs can be very minimal which is the opposite of indexed mutual funds. By that, I mean mutual funds, which are indexed to follow certain indexes in the stock market, which is what an index fund is. And index funds themselves have lower fees than traditional mutual funds, which tend to have high priced fund managers that try and beat the market or not do as poorly when the market is down, in addition to the aforementioned barriers to entry. Meaning that ETFs are the perfect investment for someone new to markets and new to investing. But like any other venture, if you go in with a strategy, you're bound to be more successful than if you just go in blind. With that key fact in mind, there are several ETF strategies out there that can help you, the investor, be successful in the long run. Starting off with the most basic strategy that there is, dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is a technique where you buy a certain fixed dollar amount of an asset on a regular schedule, whether or not the asset has changed in cost. Basically, instead of putting your money into a savings account that will probably yield you less than 2% every year, you know, unless of course you have a high yields checking or savings account, you can basically put that money into an ETF or any other asset. And this strategy has a couple of benefits, particularly for beginners. First, it helps you to get into the discipline of investing your money, which is really the one thing that holds a lot of people back from really increasing their wealth. You know, taking some of the money that you spend on stuff you don't need and instead dropping into an investment that will grow with time. This does so much for your personal finances, but it takes discipline to get into that habit and to consistently do it 
week in and week out, month in and month out to truly see real growth in your wealth. And like many things in life, when you first start doing it, the numbers you typically see are pretty lousy. And that's when the temptation to quit is the strongest. But you have to fight through that temptation and stick with it. You know, find out what works, tweak your strategy here and there. But overall, stay the course and eventually you'll reach your goals. And that's why dollar cost averaging is so important. But secondly, by investing the same fixed dollar amount in any instrument, but for the sake of this video, ETFs, you will accumulate more units of the instruments when it is priced lower and fewer, fewer units when the price is high. Essentially, averaging out the cost of your holdings and tweaking the principle of buy low and sell high. Dollar cost averaging is essentially buying more low and buying less high. You're still buying on both occasions, but when the asset price is higher, you buy less. When it's lower, you buy more. But let's go through a quick scenario that will help you to understand the power of this type of strategy. If you as a beginning investor invested $500 a month from September 2012 to August 2015 in the SPDR 500 in an, in an S&P 500 ETF, which would track the S&P 500 index. When the index was lower around September of 2012, you would have had the ability to buy more, but as it rose, you would have purchased less. But all in all, over that three year period, you would have had about 103.79 units of that index at a price of about $209 per unit in August of 2015 after that three year period. Investment would have been worth $21,735.17 at the end of the three years, meaning you would have had a return that averaged 13% annually. Not bad. Now imagine that return if you put $1,000 a month in, or how about $5,000 a month, maybe $10,000 a month for the more advanced? Yes. It's a simple strategy and it can be really powerful. And then there's the asset allocation strategy. What is the asset allocation strategy? Let me tell you about the asset allocation strategy. Asset allocation means allocating a portion of your portfolio to different asset categories, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, and cash for the purposes of diversification. This strategy often takes into account the investor's age and or their investment horizon. That is the time that they have to make investments while they're earning your money. So for someone in their 20s who just got out of college and is starting off their new job, they have quite a bit of time until they will typically retire roughly in their late 60s or early 70s, meaning about 45 to 55 years of working and earning money and having money to invest in the stock market. During this time frame, the riskiness or aggressiveness of their portfolio should change as they get up in age. When you're young, you're going to want investments that tend to have the highest yields in your portfolio, such as small cap stocks or other high growth investments. And you typically don't want a ton of investments in instruments that don't grow too much, but promise not to lose as much, things like bonds or cash. But as you get older and the closer you get to retirement, the less you want your money to be subjected to the whims of a volatile market. And the more you'll want instruments that don't lose much money, things like bonds or cash. With that in mind, that is where percentage mixes of investments based on your age come in. In other words, asset allocation. Let's say for example, you're in your twenties. An ideal or close to ideal asset allocation mix for someone like that would be 80 to 90% or more in equity ETFs and 20 to 10% or less in bond ETFs. As you get into your 30s and you are gonna have more fixed costs and things you wanna buy, like let's say a house, you are probably gonna to want to decrease your exposure to volatility, you know, unless like me, you wanna maximize that window for growth. But if you were to follow a more traditional route and you updated your asset allocation mix, you would probably do a 60% to 40% equity to bond ETF split. That could be right for you in your 30s. Now, as you get up into your 60s, you're probably gonna have the exact opposite equities to bond asset allocation mix. Most of your money would be into bonds and a smaller proportion in equities to really protect yourself against market swings. A 40 to 60% equity to bond split. Of course, everybody is different and you need to be sure to consult with your accredited financial planner or your accountant for more specific advice on these particular strategies. But that is the general idea. Swing trading. Because ETFs have good diversification and tight bid ask spreads, as well as the fact that they can cover different market segments, they can make a good candidate for swing trading. A beginning investor who is looking to eventually get into more advanced trading strategies can trade an ETF that is based on a sector or asset class where they have specific knowledge and expertise giving them particular insights into the health of that particular economic segment. Meaning that when the segment is about to undergo major disruption, that new investor can short that entire segment using ETFs, or they can even buy ETFs representing that segment if they expect it to be on a major upswing. That said, because ETFs are baskets of asset classes, they typically do not see the same degree of price appreciation. Appreciation, appreciation. For some reason that's hard to say, as do single stocks in a bull market for that stock core asset. 
but also they tend to not see as much downside as single stocks either. Again, making them great investment types for beginners looking to get into that particular investing strategy. And then we have sector rotation. Sector rotation means shifting investment from one sector of the economy to another based on how one sector is doing. He would do this using the proceeds from successfully investing in one sector. This strategy is used to take advantage of market cycles and to diversify holdings over a specified period of time. Now this is typically an advanced strategy for investors of single stocks, but newer investors tend to not have as much money as they will need to pull this strategy off. That is where ETFs come in handy. Since ETFs can be used to purchase baskets of stocks for such cheap prices, it becomes relatively easy to switch your asset allocation between sectors or classes relatively easily. Again, do not expect to make as much money doing this with ETFs as with single stocks, but also realize that the downside risk isn't as great. We have short selling. Short selling is among the riskiest moves to make, particularly for novice investors. Even using ETFs, it probably should be avoided if you're brand new to investing, even if you're not brand new to investing. But it can also be quite lucrative if you are correct about the direction that a market is going. And one of the best ways to learn how to use this strategy is to start out using ETFs. But for the uninitiated, short selling is when you take a position by borrowing shares of a stock or other assets that you believe will decrease in value by a set future date or, in other words, the expiration date, at which point you buy the asset back at the new lower price. By doing this, you can profit from the drop in a security's price. This strategy can be very profitable, but there is a reason why it's so risky. Namely, because the theoretical loss on a short sale could be unlimited since the price of any asset can also rise infinitely. That is true for ETFs, just like any other asset class. So be wary of this strategy, but if you wanna learn how to do it, you can get your feet wet with ETFs. And of course we have seasonal trends. Taking advantage of seasonal trends is very similar to sector rotation. And because of the nature of ETFs that we've already discussed, profiting off of seasonal trends is a great way for beginning investors using ETFs rather than traditional assets. For example, the sell in May and go away phenomenon is a trend that happens in US equities where they typically underperform over the sixth month May to October period, compared with the November to April period where they overperform. Another popular trend is that of gold to gain in the months of September and October, thanks to strong demand from India ahead of the wedding season and the Diwali Festival of Lights. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that these trends are not like the fountain in Yellowstone Park or anything like that. They don't happen every year. They're not as reliable as you would hope. Now, I'm sure you recall the stock market took a nosedive in 2020 around the March and April timeframe and rose steadily between May and October, turning that seasonal trend completely on its head. Keep that in mind, but also be prepared to capitalize on those trends if you want to begin to learn this advanced trading technique. And because, like I mentioned before, ETFs have such a low barrier to entry in terms of their price, using them to execute this strategy is ideal for beginners. Hedging. Hedging one's bets. I'm sure you've heard of that in terms of poker and other games of chance, but this can also be applied for trading, and particularly trading using ETFs. This is typically for folks who have larger nest eggs that they want to protect, and honestly, is probably better executed using put options. But since options traders and option trading strategies in general are so foreign and unfamiliar with your average retail investor, they're just often overlooked. But you can do what we talked about earlier and buy a short position in a broad market ETF, and if the market declines as you expected, your position will be effectively hedged again. This is an advanced technique and probably best left up to the pros. But if you wanna learn, you can learn using ETFs. So next up, take a look at some of the videos on the screen for more videos talking about advanced investing techniques. And be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell as we have more videos coming out on this very topic in the near future. So stay tuned. Also, like this video if you liked this video. And keep in mind, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on beginning your investment journey with ETFs and explore these strategies. I'll talk to you guys next time. I'm going to get out of here. Peace.